Upload a video regarding that. Now, getting into the video, which is about the cons of owning this bike. The first one being, definitely, everyone will agree, the vibrations. Yes, uh, the vibration won't kick in until uh, you go above 100 km per hour, which is not normal for any particular bike. The vibrations are really bad above 110. For like. me, I can tolerate uh, the vibration which I get from handlebar and the footrest till 110 if you go with the flow and the adrenaline maybe you can push it until 120 but, but above 120 this one vibrates like anything handlebars are still tolerable but the footrest oh my god it's beyond tolerance i did a 138 top speed on this bike on high vibrations are pretty horrible but if you are in that uh, what you call in that zone <laughs> maybe you guys if you are already in that zone Maybe that vibration will not, you will not be bothered by that vibration because uh, I was doing 138, it was vibrating like hell but I still continue doing that because I was in the zone already. So vibration, first thing, there are few small measures or modification that you can do to counter the vibration from the handlebar. That one I'll tell you guys later because this video is mainly about the cons of the bike. The next thing that I don't like about Royal Enfields are the uh, service center especially for 500cc they are the worst service and face many issues in this uh, bike and uh, I don't mind uh, having an issue on my bike the thing I mind is the time taken to fix it and how many times I have to go back to the service center with the same issue to get it fixed that's the thing I hate the most so I had few issues uh, regarding this bike uh, if I keep telling them it will be a very long video I will make another video for that. So when they were unable to fix my bike uh, in Kerala, the manager told me, sorry sir, uh, we cannot do anything. We have tried everything and uh, we could not fix it. Then I took my bike to Chennai and there also give back the bike three times and every time they keep the bike for one week plus, one week plus trying to fix it and then whenever I go for delivery, they said, sir, it's fixed. And when I show them the problem, then they say, sir, that's normal in a bike. That's the standard Royal Enfield service center line. And uh, then I, I told them, okay, fine. I made a video about that uh, problem. I showed to the service manager. If you tell me this one is normal, then I will, I don't know what to do. Either you fix it or if you have any action. Finally, fourth time they managed to fix it. And it's not just that. Uh, whenever I went to service center for general service, like a normal service, or fix, not not for any not for any problem or something. Uh, my bike ran particular kilometers. I went for service, and most of the time, like three out of four times, whenever I took the delivery of the bike, the bike started misbehaving. Misbehaving in the sense means before it was working fine. After the service. Either it had a starting problem or it was misfiring or strange noise coming from the engine. Definitely something will be there. Even though they make great bikes but the service is worst. Especially for 500cc as I told you guys before. And uh, for 350 I think it's okay. It, it does not have uh, so many sensor or so many parts. So it's still, uh, my friend has a 350 and it's still working fine. No, no big issues and since the carburetor engines are very simple and uh, they hence it's easy to maintain they don't know how to do maintenance on 500 cc bikes because 500 cc bikes are very rare they have so many sensors and uh, parameters to check compared to the carburetor engine if you're a kind of a person who don't mind less power and less top speed then maybe you can prefer the carburetor engine over this one or you can totally go over to other company it's totally up to you but my suggestion is if you want to buy any bike, not just Royal Enfield, test ride yourself. If the bike feels like it's meant for you, go ahead and buy it. So before buying Royal Enfield, you guys should 
seriously consider about this even the royal enfield spares are easily available all over india they are really really expensive you can maybe go to a royal enfield spare shop and inquire about few normal standard stuff that you may require in a bike and know for yourself before you proceed and uh, buy the bike and regret later the thing i don't like about this bike is the fuel indicator and uh, one more thing uh, which is also related to the fuel fuel cap so what happened was i gave my bike to my friend while parking he did not put the stand properly and the bike slid off and the, and the bike rolled over and the uh, fuel started coming out of the, from the top of the what do you call fuel tank so i went to the service center and i said uh, that my fuel is leaking i want to change the fuel cap so i went to change the fuel cap and i asked this guy so he said it will cost around 650 rupees i said no problem and he also told me that even if you change the fuel cap it's still going to leak i know that it's a rare case that uh, the bike will fall over and uh, the fuel will start leaking but still for me you are paying a premium price for this bike 2 lakh 10000 plus plus depending on the area you are buying from and if you are taking a loan the interest also will be a quite a amount so if you are buying if you are paying that much money obviously you want everything to be perfect so coming back to the fuel gauge this fuel gauge has been faulty so many times you guys cannot imagine i chase this very fuel gauge four times four times times even though i changed it under warranty it's a headache the whole point of fuel gauge is not at all there it shows low fuel when it has 12 liters inside the tank can you imagine that it's like full tank for most of the bikes so now i now i have totally given up on the fuel gauge idea uh, i open up the tank lid to check whether i have fuel or not uh, one more thing i don't like about this bike is uh, that it's not actually a feature or something which is built into the bike it's actually absence of a feature and that feature is abs actually i'm saying this because i had this incident in which uh, i rammed on a auto rickshaw what happened was um, you know how indian auto rickshaw drivers are right this guy just turned without any indicator i was doing 60 70 km per hour i braked and my rear wheel locked even i used the front brakes it did not stop the bike and the distance between me and the auto was around 30 to 40 meters easily but since the rear wheel locked i think the bike got dragged for 20 meters because it's a 200 kg bike and it has massive momentum even though brake the brakes are very good it could only manage to reduce the speed speed and i hit the auto in uh, i think 20 km per hour speed and uh, damaged the front part of my bike uh, causing costing me around 18000 rupees so if that time i had abs the bike would have stopped easily and i could have saved a lot of money <laughs> avoiding that accident and it's a very good feature to have so want to know how it works uh, just let me know in the comments i'll make a video on it so another thing i don't like about this bike is uh, even though the saddle height is uh, 760 mm and me being 59 i have to use toes to maneuver around this uh, bike since it's a 200 kg bike compared to any other bike it's a bit difficult to maneuver when it's uh, when you are using your legs and if you are tiptoeing then it's even more difficult for short riders it will be a bit difficult but there are solutions to make this one comfortable for you you can go to the royal enfield service center it tell them since the rear suspension is five step adjustable you can tell them to adjust as per your convenience but uh, make sure that once you adjust the suspension and you hit a bump make sure that your tire is not touching the mud guard i have not adjusted my suspension because i am already adapted to it and if at all you are adjusting the suspension uh, ride it for a while try a small off road or some speed breaker or something and make sure that your rear wheel is not touching the mudguard so that's all guys thank you for watching bye take care sayonara